Hello and welcome back to the TVBenches.com Pilot Roundtable, a Southgate Media Group podcast. I'm Kyle Trembley, the editor of TVBenches.com, and I'm joined as always by a fellow TV Benches writer. When it comes to TV pilots, she knows that the truth is out there. It's Olivia Richards! Hello! Yes! I knew you had to add that in there. Always, always. Just like this show felt compelled to many times. Um, because we are talking about uh, a show that is not technically a pilot, <laughs> but we are bending our rules uh, because it's been so long since it was on television. It is, of course, Fox's return of The X-Files. Olivia, what did you think? Okay, just watching this, you know, I think we all felt a lot of nostalgia yeah. like I was raised watching this show so yes. like, this has been an essential part of my life since like I could talk so yes you know um seeing it back on the screen now you know as I'm an adult watching it you know obviously it's something that's means a lot and it means a lot to you know everyone who is in the same position as me and who you know grew up watching it or was just always a fan of it you know from its original seasons but it yes. kind of felt like um Mm-mm. the idea of like you know like you have a childhood home and then you move away and you return to it and it's like no longer the same as it once was because everything's Uh-oh. now different that's kind of the feeling that i got when i was watching this and that it was like yeah technically it was the same cast it was the same writers like we returned but it just wasn't the same like it kind of felt like a karaoke version of itself like a little bit yeah yeah like like a um like a, like a pop star who's like 55 now and like shows up singing a song that he or she once sang. And it's like, oh, <laughs> like, oh, like yeah. maybe not. Um, you, you know, I'm not throwing out any names. Um, <laughs> so what what uh, what gave you that feeling about this? Pal? I want to talk about your feelings first. What because because you obviously have a lot of affection for the show and I do, too. I didn't I didn't watch all of it. I mostly caught up on Netflix a number of years ago. Um, I watched like four seasons, really enjoyed it. Kind of, Wheels kind of fell off later on, but. That's okay. Um, uh, what about this reboot? This this first episode of the reboot felt off for you. It just felt really jaded. Like mm. it felt like you know Mulder and Scully were just tired. Like they still had like their their classic like banter. Like they still obviously like um, Anderson and Duchovny. Like they have amazing chemistry. Like they invented the term shipping. So like obviously that was all there. But it's like that classic chemistry that they had and like what they had obviously when the show was in its prime it's just it feels so like tired and weighed down and then they tried to add like all of these like modern societal undertones of what's actually happening in our world and like I just felt myself getting like I don't know I just didn't have that same classic feeling of the show where it was a kind of an escape. It was like, you couldn't forget the world that you lived in and it was brought in, or it was being brought into a world where aliens exist. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went into this fully ready to give this my first thumbs up of the year. I was kind of saving it for the X-Files, right? Like I knew we were going to do this show. It's a big return. I knew, I knew it was going to do massive ratings and spoiler alert. It certainly did. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, I sort of came in like, like, like I think a lot of people um, with a lot of affection for it and just sort of happy to have these people back on my screen. You know, it's great to have Mulder and Scully back. It's great to see, you know, a, a Skinner and, and the cigarette smoking man back. Like all of that is great. And uh, and being on Twitter and live tweeting it was a lot of fun, um, at least at the start. And there was so much excitement, like palpable excitement on social media. It was trending number one. It was like, it's like an event, you know, and and I, I think that that's exactly why the show came back is that they kind of knew it would be an event. Um, but then my sort of excitement turned to horror and not in the X-Files good way of horror because yeah. this was terrible. I mean, this this episode, this was a like if you detach all the nostalgia, um, this was a flat out, hands down, terrible episode of television. Like the, the writing of the dialogue in this was so pandering and so just bad. Like take away all the dumb pandering stuff. Like this was a terribly written 
episode of television. This was like on par with one of those like low budget CW premieres, like a, like a low budget CW comedy premiere in terms of the quality of the writing. The, the exposition was, was sloppy. The storytelling was a complete mess. The pacing was an absolute catastrophe in this episode. The way they front loaded so much information and, and the way that Mulder, after one scene with the conspiracy nut, is suddenly like a true believer in conspiracies. Like, it, it, like and not in like, and not in like the fun kind of conspiracies either, but in like the Alex Jones kind of conspiracies. Like, like yep. 9-11 was an inside job. Suddenly Mulder's on board with that. I, I, I like this. This episode was an absolute horror story. And not not in the X Files way. Like this was a horror story of an episode. This was this was a catastrophically bad episode of television. Like this is this was this was terrible. This was Heroes Reborn bad. Oh this, no! This this premiere and and in a lot of ways I think it's similar because it's a it's a reboot that clearly had no idea why it was being rebooted and just sort of did it for the commercial money because they're they're just this. Poor Joel McHale is playing the Alex Jones character, and and I mean he's he's fine, but yikes! I mean yikes! Like like I don't know if it was the 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 whole like foxness of it all, like like how kind of Twenty Four has this like oh, overtones of being like really like pro torture, but there was definitely a kind of anti government foxness to this that was not present in the original X Files. No, that was. That- that was the element that like I really like I was watching it and I just got really frustrated because I was like what the heck like if I wanted to be watching a show about like political crisis I would go watch a show about political crisis like can I just watch a show about you know an unlikely duo trying to figure out if aliens are real (laughs) like what happened to that I couldn't believe it as it was happening when Mulder was actually like backing up the 9-11 was an inside job guy like, I couldn't believe that they sold out the character to that extent. You know, because Mulder's, Mulder's obviously kind of out there. You know, that's the character and is certainly willing to believe in conspiracies. But to turn him into that kind of conspiracy theorist, like the the ultra right wing, um, you know, the government is out to kill us all conspiracy theorist. And to do it in one scene is so ludicrous and such like so not true to who that character is that that I was like offended that the show would go in that direction and I could not I thought they were bringing on the Joel McHale, McHale character to be like the guy that that made Mulder that like reintroduced us to Mulder and Scully because they would like laugh him down and be like oh you know we we believe in a lot of stuff but not what you're selling but then like five minutes later Mulder is like sitting with him trying to convince Scully that he's right about everything I just, I couldn't believe that the show went in that direction. And and that I mean that was like the first in many 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 disastrous decisions this this premiere made. Um it was it was just really bad. I mean this was a terrible episode of television. Um and I yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, I I I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like I can't believe that that happened. <laughs> it's no, it was frustrating cuz honestly what I thought is it kind of played out like kind of weird fan fiction that you accidentally yeah. find because you were looking for like a good one but you kind of read it because you're like okay like it started off okay but like the person has a really tenuous grasp on the character <laughs> right. and like obviously they have some issues that starts coming out through the plot and yeah you kind of just read it anyways because you hate yourself so <laughs> yes it was, it was fan fiction written by someone who doesn't really like the show like that, yeah. that's it was very cynical and and very like and poor David Duchovny, man. Like, first of all, Gillian Anderson still looks fantastic and is oh, still she's like incredible. she's a goddess, right? She's just she's killing it. She she just slipped right back into Scully. It was like the old Scully was there, nothing had changed. Poor David Duchovny, man. I, <laughs> Walter has taken a beating over the years. Oh, I felt sorry for him by the end of this episode because he he was not looking great and he was kind of struggling. Like, oh, it wasn't going so well for him. <laughs> <laughs> and, no. and, uh, yeah, just just a little bit rough, and and obviously he was not served well by by the script and by what his character was asked to do. But man, that it's just by the end, I was depressed. I was just I just felt bad. Yeah, and like in the right, 
old episodes, like they had that playful banter and that one of them was actually playful <laughs> and how it was so depressing. Yeah. Like Sully was supposed to be like the down to earth one where she is like pulling, you know, Mulder back down, you know, cause he's usually like, you know, all over the place. But when you have again, like two jaded characters, like even their, you know, even when they were in the same room together, like they still had like traces, but honestly it just was so draining. <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course the show had to introduce a, a much younger man in uh, Joel McHale and a much younger woman in uh, Annette Mahindru, a.k.a. Nina from The Americans, one of my favorite oh. shows on TV, um, to sort of tempt our two heroes. You know, which, which again, like the pervasive theme here is how cynical all of this felt. And that was just another example of like, oh, the, of course they're going to throw like alternate love interests to really like ping, ping the hearts of the shippers and get everyone feeling, you know, get, get everyone tweeting about how like, oh no, you didn't, you know, it's like, oh, it just, it, you, what, what you want to do with this kind of reboot is, is hide. You want to do what, what the Star Wars movie did, honestly, which is, which is, we all know this is built on a kind of commercial cynicism, but you want the material to be joyful enough and good enough to hide the seams. You know, every, everyone who sees the new Star Wars is aware of the economics of the Star Wars and is aware of what all of this is about. But if 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 the whole in, if the whole enterprise, if the movie is is just embraces it. And and is happy and joyful and, and makes you feel things. It's like, well, you can forgive that aspect of it. That's what you want from this reboot. You want it to be just the X-Files again. You want it to bring back the classic feeling to the point where you can forget about these sort of cynical commercial reasons behind it. And this pilot, all I was thinking about by the end is how cynical all of this was. All I could think about is how, how the Fox executives are counting their money and so excited that they were able to work this – stupid conspiracy theory angle into it and, and turn Mulder's sort of um, tr the truth is out there, you know, alien conspiracy theory into like political conspiracy theories. Like they, they must've been really high fiving in, in, in their plush offices about that one. And it just, oh, it all, it all, it just made me feel like sort of sick and not happy at all about, about any of this. Uh, no, I completely agree. And again, it's just so sad to see, you know, a show that, you know, was so full of like warmth and, you know, that you just have so many good memories attached to kind of turned into that. <laughs> so. yeah. But here's the thing. Every critic wrote that this, this was by far the worst of the six episodes they did. And then I'm sure you didn't have an opportunity to watch tonight. We're recording this on the Monday after it premiered. Um, but the, the second episode ran tonight and I, I, you didn't have an opportunity to watch it, did you? No, no, I missed it. Okay, the second episode was like a, a Monster of the Week episode. A lot of the conspiracy stuff took a back seat. And it felt like the X-Files again. It, it, was, it was Mulder and Scully investigating a really weird case. And like near the end, there was this really haunting monologue by one of the episodic characters that was like really affecting and just reminded me of what makes the X-Files great. And so I'm a little bit conflicted here. Because this, this first episode was an abject disaster, but the second episode was actually, like, everything that I kind of wanted from this reboot. <laughs> and so I don't – and, like, we're the pilot roundtable, so we should only be talking about the first episode. But I'm wondering if they just took a big swing and a miss to start with, and then if the rest of the episodes aren't going to be, like, pretty good at least. So I'm kind of conflicted. Um, Plus the yeah. thing, it's kind of good to hear that, like, at least it's kind of – picking up a little bit it's not just gonna be you know a really draining <laughs> yeah. event trying to get through all of these and like and it's weird because like when we talk about pilots like typically we're talking about like the first time anything's ever been written for an entirely like fresh set of characters so like it's okay you know it makes sense that it's gonna falter a little bit you wouldn't think that that would happen on a reboot where literally it's been a show that's been on forever and it's a classic and like the characters have already been so long established yeah but like you know i guess this falls into like the the classic pilot pitfall of they're kind of finding their footing again in a new setting and kind of in a new a new revamp of the show so it's kind of good that at least it picks up even if you know the pilot was kind of a little bit of a huge disaster yeah I, i'm gonna make another star wars metaphor because this wasn't nerdy enough before that but um the <laughs> The pilot or the, um, the the first episode of this reboot kind of felt like the prequels of Star Wars where they tried something different. Like like 
the prequels, I think, were a lot more ambitious from a storytelling perspective than the, than the Force Awakens. Like, like they, they were trying to do something with those prequels that was very different than the original, and they failed spectacularly. And I feel like this first episode was like the X Files. The, the Chris Carter and Co. might have had a little bit too much time to think about this and tried a little bit too hard to incorporate sort of the 2016 ness of it all, and. Try, took a big, big swing at like actually remaking the X Files as a show that exists in the modern day and is concerned with modern day issues, and it just went horribly. Like it just everything went wrong. It was a complete disaster. And then, but you know that's that's their reboot. That's the first episode. And then the series got right back to doing what it does well, which is case of the week. You know, just hey, give us a monster. Let let our two very charismatic leads investigate. And let's go from there. And like, that's really all anyone wants out of this. Like, we just want to feel the X Files-ness of it all again. And that's what I think, what I hope this series is going to get to, which is just, hey, you know, maybe you're not going to reinvent the wheel again, like The Force Awakens. Maybe you're just going to tell the same stories you've always told and change some names and change some characters. But you know what? Everyone's fine with that. I, I just want it to feel like it did back then, like that excitement of, of what it once was. And so I, I think... Based on the second episode, that might be the direction that this is heading. I hope it's the direction that this is heading and that this first pilot was just a just a huge miscalculation and that the show just gets back to being the X-Files that we all remember. And even if it's only 90% as good, hey, you know, I think I think most all of us will take 90% of the X-Files. You know what? That's yeah, I can go with that. If you know, just as long as whatever happened in the pilot doesn't happen again for, you know, the next 10 episodes, <laughs> yes. then you know what? I will take it. Yeah. Let's, let's just pretend that pilot never happened and go from there. <laughs> um, we'll just repress that memory. So, uh, as far as the numbers go, this is a tricky one because it premiered immediately following a, a big NFL playoff game. Um, but for what it's worth, this did a 5.1 in the demo with 13.5 million viewers, we haven't seen numbers like that since like the, the heyday of Empire. So, uh, you know, we'll see how, how the ratings hold up. But I, I know it was very uh, talked about on Twitter tonight. So I think it's going to still be pretty big. Um, it's only a six episode limited run. So there's no real like canceled make it through the season or whatever. Um, so your final verdict, Olivia, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on The X-Files. Despite a rocky start and despite, you know, kind of sitting through an episode that just was very, very, very disappointing. You know what? I still have hope and the show means so much. So, you know what? It's a thumbs up for me. You know what? Me too. <laughs> it is a yeah. thumbs up for me it's as well. The season. Yeah. First, first thumbs up of 2016 from me. Um, it, hilariously on probably the most negative review I've given to a pilot <laughs> in 2016. <laughs> but I was going to give it a thumbs down and then I caught tonight's second episode and Again, it felt like the X Files again, and yeah, it still feels like a karaoke version of the original. But you know what? If it feels like a much better karaoke version than the first episode did, and I'm I am just fine with that. You know, all all I really want is to be creeped out and to spend time with Mulder and Scully, and, and to ha talk talk a little bit about the kind of fun conspiracies that the original series dealt with. And that that's what the second episode did, and and. I mean, how are you going to give a thumbs down to the X-Files? My goodness. It's <laughs> you can't. You just can't. You can't. So, so we'll, we'll just hope that the, uh, the pilot was just a one-time mistake and we're going to get back to, back to what this series does best, um, which is scaring us and making us feel feelings. So, <laughs> so that's our hope. Um, yes. You've been listening to the Pilot Roundtable, a TVBinges.com and Southgate Media Group production. You can listen to all of our episodes on iTunes where you can rate and review us. We'd appreciate that. Or find us at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Follow Olivia on Twitter at Richards Olivia and me on Twitter at Kyle Loves TV. Until next time.